Anthony Albanese led his Labour Party to victory and ousted the Conservatives from power in an election that analysts say has transformed Australia's political landscape. At the crest of this seismic shift in Prime Minister-elect Anthony Albanese himself, a Labour Party politician with humble roots nicknamed Albo, was born in 1963 and was raised by a single mother on a disability pension. Albo's financially precarious childhood saw him growing up in public housing in the seedy suburbs of Sydney's inner west. According to his website, he was the first person in his family to finish school, let alone university. Albany studied economics at university while nursing a lifelong ambition to be the Prime Minister. He got involved in student politics and aged 22, he was elected President of Young Labour, the party's youth wing. It was in 1996 that he was elected to the Federal Parliament as a representative of Greenler, the area he grew up in. Since then, Albanese has spent much of his 26 years in politics, in the opposition and only six in government. Early in 2021, Albanese survived a car crash. He later told the media that the near-death experience changed his life. He overcame his injuries, shed a lot of weight and polished his image to position himself as a serious contender in the race for the top job. Shortly after incumbent Scott Morrison conceded defeat on Saturday, Albanese thanked voters for the extraordinary honor of becoming nation's 31st Prime Minister and said he would work in government to bring Australians together. China, which is holding the rotating presidency of BRICS bloc this year, said on Friday that it actively supports the expansion of five-member group a day after Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said that Saudi Arabia and Argentina decide to join the grouping. Riyadh and Buenos Aires have shown interest in BRICS activities. Russia state-run TASS news agency quoted Lavrov as saying in an interview on Thursday, the next BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa summit is being prepared, Lavrov said. The outreach format will be established within its framework where around a dozen developing economies will participate, he added. Responding to Lavrov's BRICS expansion comments, Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman told a media briefing here that as the BRICS share this year, China actively supports the start of BRICS expansion process and broadens BRICS plus cooperation. China will work on BRICS-related parties to continue to have in-depth discussions on BRICS expansion and determine the standards and procedures for that on the basis of consensus. We look forward to make like-minded partners joining the big family of BRICS, he said. Foreign ministers and top officials of Kazakhstan, Saudi Arabia, Argentina, Egypt, Nigeria, Senegal, the UAE and Thailand took part in the foreign ministers meeting of the five-member group held virtually on May 19 under Beijing's BRICS Plus initiative. As the world reels under the after-effects of deadly coronavirus pandemic, conspiracy theorists have now begun to link COVID-19 vaccines to monkeypox, the cases of which have been reported in a few countries over the last 2-3 weeks. Their theory, COVID-19 vaccines contain a chimpanzee virus that is causing the monkeypox outbreak. The theory is based on the fact that the AstraZeneca vaccine developed by University of Oxford, available in India under the label Covishield, contains a chimpanzee adenovirus vaccine vector. While there is science behind this, conspiracy theorists are using this as yet another reason to drum up anti-vaccine sentiment. A popular example is Alex Jones of Infowars who is known for spreading fake news and uncounted claims in the U.S. 
Johns claimed that monkeypox has popped up in countries where people have been taking AstraZeneca and Johnson & Johnson vaccine. What is AstraZeneca and Johnson & Johnson? They are virus vectors that inject the genome of a chimpanzee into cells, Johns claimed. Several conspiracy theories also claim that the COVID-19 vaccines were developed in monkey tissues while some are blaming Bill Gates for the pandemic outbreak and the aftermath. Yes, the AstraZeneca vaccine uses chimpanzee adenovirus vaccine vector, which is a harmless, weakened virus that usually causes the common cold in chimpanzees. The University of Oxford during the development of vaccine said that chimpanzee adenoviral vectors are a very well studied vaccine type, having been used safely in thousands of subjects. It has been genetically changed so that it is impossible for it to grow in humans, the University of Oxford has said. Hungary's Prime Minister Viktor Orban on Tuesday imposed a new state of emergency in the country, citing the challenges posed by ongoing war in neighboring Ukraine. Hungary is already under a state of emergency linked to COVID pandemic, which was due to expire next Tuesday. The world is on the verge of an economic crisis. Hungary must stay out of this war and protect the financial security of its families nationalist leader said on Facebook in comments that raised fresh concerns about the restrictions of rights. This requires room for immediate action. The government exercising its right under the basic law declares a state of emergency due to war as of midnight, Orban added. Shortly before the announcement, the Hungarian parliament, which had just been sworn in, amended the constitution to allow for such a measure. Orban's party commands a two-third majority in the chamber. Rules decided under the new law. Change will be announced on Wednesday, Orban said. The Hungarian Civil Liberties Union denounced the move, saying that the state of emergency that has become permanent. The move gives Orban more leeway than usual, allowing him to restrict or simply suspend everybody's fundamental rights, the group said slamming what it described as the marginalization of parliament. <music> National Security Advisor Ajit Doval, while speaking at the 4th Regional Security Dialogue on Afghanistan on Friday, highlighted the need for enhancing country's capability to counter terrorism. NSAs of different countries also stressed the need to find constructive ways to ensure peace and stability in Afghanistan while combating terrorism prevalent in the region. The security dialogue was held in Tajikistan. NSAs of India, Russia, China, Iran, Tajikistan, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan and Kyrgyzstan took part in the dialogues to discuss the security situations in Afghanistan. NSA Ajit Doval said India was and is an important stakeholder in Afghanistan. He also said India's special relationship with the people of Afghanistan over the centuries will guide its approach to any issues in the country. He added that after August 2021, India has provided Afghanistan with 17,000 metric tons of weed, 5 lakh doses of Covaxin, 13 tons of essential life-saving medicines and winter clothing, as well as 60 million doses of polio vaccine. He highlighted the need for representation of all sections of Afghan society, including women and minorities, so that the collective energies of the population feel motivated to contribute to nation building. He said that women and youth are critical for the future of any society and that continued provision of education for girls and employment to women and youth will ensure productivity and spur growth. It will also have a positive social impact including discouraging radical ideologies among young people.
The cash strapped Pakistan government is examining the possibility of conserving fuel by reducing the number of working days, a move by which it is hoping to save an estimated 2.7 billion US dollar in foreign exchange, a media report said on Monday. The estimates are based on three different scenarios in terms of working days and fuel conservation prepared by the State Bank of Pakistan for foreign exchange savings of 1.5 billion US dollar to 2.7 billion US dollar the dawn newspaper reported Pakistan's total oil imports for the first 10 months of the current fiscal year has surged beyond 17 billion US dollar displaying a massive 96% growth compared to the same period in the last fiscal year the report said this includes imports of petroleum products worth 8.5 billion US dollar and petroleum crude worth 4.2 billion US dollar showing 121% and 75% jump respectively it said a senior government official said that the relevant authorities, power and petroleum divisions had been advised to come up with their estimates, including electricity conservation, to take up the matter in a holistic manner with cost-benefit analysis of various sectors before reaching a conclusion. He said the central bank's estimates mostly covered Petroleum products consumption in normal working days a week including retail business and government office and educational institutions which in any case would be on summer holidays. However, it did not take into account liquefied natural gas imports which mostly go into power sector. During the first 10 months of current fiscal year, LNG imports amounted to 3.7 billion US dollar, showing an increase of 83%, though the import qualities were on lower side. When Vladimir Putin announced the invasion of Ukraine, war seemed far away from Russian territory, yet within days the conflict came home not with cruise missiles and mortars, but in the form of unprecedented and unexpectedly expensive volleys of sanctions by Western governments and economic punishment by corporations. Three months after February 24 invasion, many ordinary Russians are reeling from those blows to their livelihoods and emotions. Moscow's vast shopping malls have turned into eerie expanses of shuttered store friends once occupied by western retailers mcdonald's whose opening in russia in 1990 was a cultural phenomenon a shiny modern convenience coming to a dreary country ground down by limited choices pulled out of russia entirely in response to its invasion of ukraine ikea the epitome of affordable modern comforts suspended operations Tens of thousands of once secure jobs are now suddenly in question in a very short time. Major industrial players including oil giants BP and Shell and automaker Renault walked away despite their huge investments in Russia. Shell has estimated it will lose about $5 billion by trying to unload its Russian assets. While the multinationals were leaving, thousands of Russians who had the economic means to do so were also fleeing, frightened by harsh new government moves connected to the war that they saw as a plunge into full totalitarianism. Some young men may have also fled in fear that Kremlin would impose a mandatory draft to feed its war machine. Nineteen students and two teachers lost their lives in a school shooting in Texas, U.S. on Tuesday. According to a government official, the shooter, an 18-year-old who was shot dead on the site by responding officers, entered the school and shot at whoever was in his way. As soon as the suspect made entry into the school, he started shooting. Children, teachers, whoever is in his way, said Christopher Oliver of the Texas Department of Public Safety as quoted in a report by The Independent. The shooter identified as Salvador Ramos is believed to have abandoned 
his car outside the school and entered the school grounds with a handgun and possibly a rifle as per the police. The police added that he was wearing body armor at the time. The United States is playing with fire, the Chinese State Council's Taiwan Affairs Office said Monday, following a vote by President Joe Biden to defend the self-ruled island in the event Beijing attempts to take control, state media reported. The United States is using the Taiwan card to contain China and will itself get burned, said Zhu Fengliyan, a spokeswoman for the council which is often described as China's cabinet. The remarks by Biden earlier in the day were his strongest to date on the issue of Taiwan and come amid rising tensions over China's growing economic and military power. China urged United States to stop any remarks or actions that violate previously established principles between the two countries. Asked Monday if Washington was willing to get involved militarily to defend Taiwan, Biden replied, yes, that is the commitment we made, he said. The U.S. president spoke in Tokyo where he is meeting with Japan's prime minister ahead of a regional summit Tuesday. Washington and allies like Japan have framed a tough response to Russia's invasion of Ukraine as a warning to others, especially China, against unilateral military action. China's Taiwan Affairs Office falls under its state council, which is often described as country's cabinet. The U.S. Energy Department launched a program on Thursday to fund four large-scale projects across the country that can remove carbon dioxide from the air, investing $3.5 billion in a nascent technology the Biden administration says is necessary to meet a goal of achieving net zero emissions by mid-century. The agency released a formal notice saying it would fund $3.5 billion program created by the 2021 bipartisan infrastructure law that would create four regional direct air capture hubs to spur the widespread deployment of the technology and carbon dioxide transport and storage infrastructure. The UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change released a report last month that, that said the world will need carbon dioxide removal technologies ranging from planting trees that soak up carbon to grow to costly technologies to suck carbon dioxide directly from the air to meet global goals to curb climate change. The UN's latest climate report made clear that removing legacy carbon pollution from the air through direct air capture and safely storing it is an essential weapon in our fight against climate crisis, said Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm. Carbon removal technology has gained major attention and investment in recent months. There are three major direct air capture projects under development that have emerged in North America and Europe, but they are only sucking up small amount of carbon dioxide from the air currently. Earlier this year, technology firms Google, Shopify, Meta and Stripe launched a $1 billion fund that will buy carbon removal credits over the next decades as a way to incentivize rapid deployment of the technology. Billionaire entrepreneur Elon Musk last year offered inventors $100 million in prize money to develop new carbon removal technologies. 